let's think a little bit about the labor market. And in all of these videos, whether we're talking about renting units or hiring people, these are huge oversimplifications. But we're doing it this way so we can apply some of these basic basic ideas that we're being exposed to in this kind of survey of microeconomics so that we can apply those basic ideas to kind of real world things. But it's important to realize that we're making huge oversimplifications and oftentimes the real context can be more complicated or a little bit nuanced. But it gives us a way of thinking about things. So this is the unskilled labor market, so people who don't have any specific training or experience for a given job. The vertical axis is their wage rate per hour. It's essentially the price of labor. This little gap here shows I started at zero, but then I jumped up to five, six, seven. And this right here is a quantity of labor. And we're measuring that in terms of millions of hours per month. And once again, we have this little gap here so we can jump to 20, 20 million hours, 21 million hours. And it's important to realize, when we think about demand in the labor market, we're not talking about individual consumers. We're talking about employers. In most cases, demand comes from individual consumers. But now the demand is coming from employers. These are the people who are essentially buying labor. And the supply is not coming from corporations. The supply is coming from the people who provide labor. So now it's coming from individual workers. So now it is coming from workers. So let's just say that this market starts off being completely unregulated. And so it has a natural equilibrium, equilibrium price or equilibrium range at $6 or equilibrium wage at $6 an hour, and an equilibrium quantity of labor supplied, which is 22, 22 millions of hours per month. But let's say the government in this, this hypothetical city or country says, you know what? $6 is a really low wage. We have trouble imagining how people live well off of a $6 an hour wage. So they say that this right over here is too low. The government does not like it. And maybe many of their voters are people making that wage. So they say, hey, you know what? We are going to pass some well-intentioned legislation. We are going to pass a minimum wage. We are going to pass a law, minimum wage, that says any employer has to pay at least, at least $7 an hour. $7 an hour. So it has to be at least $7 an hour. So this right over here is a price. This is a price floor. This is a minimum price in the market. When we talked about rent control, that was a price ceiling. That was a maximum price for rent. Now this is a minimum price for labor. And with, since the price floor, this minimum price, is higher than the actual clearing price, it's going to distort the market. So our price floor is right over here, $7. So this right over here is our minimum wage. So this right over here is our minimum wage. So what's going to happen here? Well, if you look at the demand side of things, the employers are going to say, wow, if I have to pay $7 an hour now, I can only afford 21 million hours of labor. So they're going to say, I can only afford now 21 million hours of labor. But if you look at the if you look at the workers, they're going to be they're going to say, "Gee, if I can if I can make seven dollars an hour, if I can make seven dollars an hour, then I more people are going to be willing to work. Either an individual might say, "Well, like if I was working forty hours a week, making six dollars an hour, if I'm making seven dollars an hour, I'm willing to make, work forty five hours a week." Or there might be a, a student who's on the fence who says, "Wow, now wages have gone up enough that it makes sense for me to work." There might be a maybe someone who's retired and now at six dollars wasn't enough for them to come out of retirement, but seven dollars is. Maybe a stay at home parent now says seven dollars is enough for them to come out of retirement or uh, or not stay at home anymore. And so it actually the labor, the the supply, the quantity supplied of labor in terms of hours will increase. And so at $7 an hour, people will be willing to supply that much labor. But what's going to happen? What's going to happen in this situation right over here? Well, in this situation, you have all of these people who want to work, but there's only demand for this much work. So this is right here. This is going to be an oversupply of labor. Oversupply of labor. So another way to think about it, there's only jobs for 21 million people now. And now 23 million people want to work. So you're going to have 2 million people who are, by the classical definition of unemployed, people who are looking for work who can't find work now. And it, once again, this is completely oversimplified because at this point right over here, based on the way I just viewed that, you would have no unemployment. 
And we all know, even when the economy is humming maximally and there's no regulation, there is some unemployment just due to frictions in the market, people just randomly quitting jobs or firing, getting, or, or, or looking for a new job. But so you could almost view this as excess unemployment. Or you could view this as just a very oversimplified model. And in the ideal world, you get close to zero unemployment. Now you have more people looking for jobs and you, because the wages have gone, but fewer jobs because the employers are forced to pay more. If we make all of the assumptions in the model, you just want to say how many fewer jobs are there, because this obviously we're talking about more people even looking for jobs because the perceived wages have gone up. But in the absolute level, if you, you know, based on these, these linear supply and demand curves, before there was demand for 22 million jobs, and that was actually where the, or the quantity demanded was, and that's also where the quantity supplied was, but now it's only 21 million. So based on this model, you're going to have 1 million 1 million fewer jobs. 1 million fewer jobs. Now, when you think about it in terms of surplus, so before the minimum wage, the entire surplus was this entire area over here. So this entire area that's below the demand curve and above the supply curve. This entire area was a total surplus, and it was being divided between the consumer surplus and the producer surplus. So this right over here, so the, between the price and the supply curve was a producer surplus. And the producer surplus, remember, the producers of labor are the individual workers. So this was the benefit above and beyond the opportunity cost that the workers were getting, was this area right over here, that I'm doing kind of in dark white or filled in white. And the consumer surplus, or the employer surplus here, was the value that the employers were getting, the value that the employers were getting above and beyond the price that they had to pay. Now in this situation of a minimum wage, now this is the set price. This is the quantity of labor that is demanded. And so what you lose now, the surplus that we lose, is this quantity right over here. This quantity right over here. And we could figure out that area quite easily. Let's see, this, this height right over here is 1 million hours per month. So it's going to be 1, 1 million. I'll just write one for it. We'll just remember it's all in millions. Times this height, times this height right over here, which is $2 per hour. So times two, times 1 half. If we just multiply these, we get this whole rectangle. For the area of the triangle, we multiply it times 1 half. Times 1 half. That gives us, that cancels out, that gives us exactly one. And the units are dollars per hour times millions of hours per month gives us dollar, millions of dollars per month. So it becomes $1 million, $1 million per month of, of surplus, of benefit, of, of, of benefit above and beyond, of, uh, of total benefit that is lost to this market because of this regulation, if you, if you assume all of the things in this model. So just like we talked about in the last video, we have a $1 million per month dead weight loss. Dead weight dead weight loss. Now, not everyone loses here. Because the price was set up, because the price is set up over here, for the people who are working those, the, the, those first 21 million hours uh, per month, their, their producer surplus has now increased because the space between what they're getting and their opportunity cost has now increased. So for those lucky enough to produce to actually have a job, they are those workers now do have a higher surplus. But for those and for those employers, which is on the demand side right now, their surplus who who are employing those first 21 million uh, hours of labor, they now have a smaller have a have a smaller consumer surplus or demand surplus or employer surplus right there. So for the first for the first 21 million units of labor, it is it is it's redistributing the pie between the employers and the workers. But then because you are making the 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 wage higher, it's reducing the overall demand. So there is if you believe this model some job destruction taking place.